In this clip, I'll give you a few pointers on how to handle data frames. And to save us some typing, let's copy one of the data frames to a new one called My Data and delete the other ones to clear the clutter in the environment. To delete, you can use the command rm for remove with the names of the objects as arguments. Remember that you can view the structure of a data frame with the function str my data, which gives us an overview of the columns or variables of my data. To view, you can type my data. And in this case, our data frame is relatively small, so we can scroll easily to inspect all of it. But if you have a large data set with thousands of rows, you may want to view only the top few lines. To view the head of a data frame, use head my data, which will display the first six rows by default. And if you want to view 10 lines, then add 10 as an argument to the function. If you want to view the bottom 15 lines of a data set, use a tail. Remember that in a vector, you can access the values by subsetting with square brackets. Suppose we have a vector letters, which you will also have because it's a built-in data set that comes with base R. You can access the fifth position in that vector with a letters square brackets five or the seventh with seven. Now, vectors are one-dimensional data structures and data frames are two-dimensional. So if you type my data with a one in square brackets, you will get the entire first column, which is name in this case. If you want R to return the fourth value in the first column, you need to tell R that you have an additional condition on the rows, which you can specify in the brackets as well. In R, conditions on rows always come before conditions on columns. So my data square brackets four comma one will give you the name of the fourth person in our data set. If you leave the condition on the column unspecified, you'll get the entire data set for that person. Also recall that each column in the data frame is a vector. So what R returns with my data and one in square brackets is the vector that makes up the first column of that data frame. You can also call columns by their name with the dollar sign and to call the score column, type my data dollar score. Our studio should give you a selection of columns once you type the dollar sign. Now you can also perform calculations on such subsetted vectors and to get the average score in the exam, you can use mean my data dollar score and hit enter. Very often you want to use data from a data set that satisfies a certain condition. So you need to subset your data set for which we can use the function subset. Suppose you only want the data for anyone age 20 and over, then we can type a subset my data age larger or equal to 20, which tells R to only return those rows from the data set my data, where the value for the column age is equal to or larger than 20. If you want to further restrict the selection to those 20 and over, but under 30, you can add that condition as a subset my data age larger or equal to 20 and age less than 30. And if you only want the data from females, use a subset my data gender equals female. No two things here. There are two equal signs to evaluate the condition. A single equal sign has actually a very different function in R, which we will see below. The quotes around the value female are also vital because gender is a factor variable. Now, if you understand why subset my data gender equals female dollar age returns a vector of numbers, you're on the right track in mastering data frames. Now this returns the age values for the females because we call the column age in a subsetted data frame. The only difference being that the subsetted data frame is the output of a function rather than a named object. The other task that you may want to use subset for is if you want to select specific columns. Suppose you want from the data frame my data only the first, second and third columns, then use subset my data select equals C123, which tells R to return the columns 1, 2, and 3. You can also select by name with a subset my data select equals name gender 
age. And suppose you want all columns except for the one with age. You can exclude that column with a subset my data select equals minus age. Note that we use the single equal sign here because we're not evaluating a condition, but we assign a value to the select argument. Subsetting options in R are actually so numerous that there are usually more than one solutions to your problem. So if you can roughly follow the following argument, you've understood the principle well enough to understand help pages in R or on the web more generally. If we subset my data select equals one, we simply get the first column. This is essentially equal to saying my data square bracket one, which likewise selects the first column because name is the first vector in the data frame my data. And since we can call columns in data frames with square brackets, the following also selects the first three columns without the use of the subset function. My data square bracket open comma C one, two, three. So what you tell R here now is to return all rows from the data frame because that condition is left unspecified and then select the elements one, two, three, which equals the columns one, two, three, because that's simply what you specify here in the column slot.